What's up everyone? So a little while ago I decided to try out Epic 7, which was a game that I had heard a lot of good things about on the Gacha subreddit. And if you've spent more than two minutes on that subreddit, you know that that's actually a pretty hard thing to come by. So I've been trying out the game and I've been playing it daily for over a month now and I've really been enjoying myself and there's there's quite a bit to, to cover here. So I'm gonna kind of go over my impressions of the game from someone who's never played it before and maybe if you're like me, you might end up trying it out as well. Let's start by talking about one of the most important features in a mobile game, which is the gacha system. And it's pretty interesting in Epic 7 because most banners that I've pulled on only have the featured five star unit available as the one that you can pull. So that means that you literally cannot off banner a different five star. And it means you don't get as many five stars in general, but you're always going to get the one that you want when you start summoning. You need about 120 summons to pity a unit which doesn't seem terrible uh, compared to you know some games and dupes are really not as important in epic 7 so you don't have to be going for a bunch of copies of a unit there is an application for it but it's not a huge part of it especially if you're not looking to be at the very height of you know your pvp powers so you can actually buy an item that's effectively worth a dupe and you can get one every arena season so uh, you're able to work on time limited characters as well that you may not have been able to finish in epic Seven, you also pull for artifacts and it means that like they're basically these equipable items that you can put onto your characters and these ones do need dupes to be uh, effective but sometimes they don't so it's it's kind of a mixed system but it's still better than a lot of other systems where you do need like a full you know limit broken artifact equivalent to be able to be competitive so overall I really like this gacha system it's actually very smart because people aren't getting off banners very often at all there's way more value when they actually rerun a character later on. They also have a pretty good track record from what I can tell of buffing units when they need to be buffed and even recently nerfing a unit, which then the, that unit was fully refunded to all the players that had acquired her. So it, it seems like a pretty healthy gacha in terms of, you know, how many resources you get They're They're pretty generous. I'm still a new player. So I'm in that new player high of having a ton of summoning resources, but still, uh, I only have good things so far to say about the gacha in Epic 7. There are a lot of characters in Epic 7 and there's a good mix of male and female characters, although there uh, are of course more female characters. I mean, it is a gacha after all, but you can get some pretty cool characters, including Edward Elric, who I actually started the game in order to get. I was so excited about that. I also managed to get Roy Mustang, which I was very pleased uh, by, but I've actually gotten so many max level characters at this point. I've got uh, this new, uh, I guess, K-pop collaboration. I've been pulling all of those characters. You know, I've got Hawkeye, there's so many cool characters in this game and they have uh, really nice designs the the voice acting in English is is just okay but I've heard that it's better if you change it over into you know other languages uh, but there's definitely lots of very cool character very high quality art uh, to experience and enjoy in epic 7 and I really appreciate that another cool thing about it is that you can have these lower level characters so uh, lower um, rarity characters so for example furious here was a four star uh, um, Mute movie is a three star, but you can awaken them and they become very, very useful for specific game modes. So if you're interested, you know, in a game that lets you use your lower rarity characters, then this is a game that's going to allow you to do that for various types of content. And there are a ton of different types of content to be able to enjoy in Epic Seven. One note that I want to talk about is that in this game, in order to raise the rarity of your units, you have to fuse, you know, a certain amount of units into them. So for example, if I wanted to get Karen into a six star, I would have to fuse five five star units into her and they have these kind of throwaway units that you can level up and get to those rarities. It is kind of a slog in the beginning. I'm sure experienced players uh, at their whatever, how long they've been playing, they're able to do it really easily. For me, it takes quite a bit of time to get a character uh, from five star to six star because uh, there's a lot of farming involved with these doggos that you can see here, the meg mega phantasma. So it's not my favorite upgrade system but it's really fair considering how generous the rest of the game has been and how the whole thing is it's one of those games where it's more of an investment than a race 
in Epic 7, there are a ton of different game modes, ways to play the game. Uh, there's ways that you can farm for, you know, different runes for your characters, but also there's hunts so that you can grab stuff to build gear. But then there's actually some more fun modes that aren't just farming, uh, like some PvE modes, for example, the Abyss here, which is a kind of like a big tower that you can complete. And there's a ton of actually very good rewards and some fun stages. Some of the stages are a bit of a slog, but it's interesting to have that PvE content. There's also Labyrinth, which is more of a mode where you're actually exploring these different areas and you have to click and choose which direction you go. It's also kind of interesting, but at times can be kind of long. I, you know, like this Nixied Sanctum, I, I don't like doing it. I know that uh, other players feel the same way. There's also another tower mode where every time you defeat uh, a level, you're able to select devices that then power up your units. And then that's kind of fun to make your units super busted. And again, gain a bunch of different rewards. And there's even a kind of a trial mode where you can earn currency by scoring highly and you use that to buy upgrades for your units. So these are all really interesting PVE modes that I, I think that, you know, a lot of people can get, get a lot of enjoyment out of, including there's also, you know, we didn't even talk about the side story where you're able to, uh, you know, see some interesting sometimes uh, stories for some of the characters. There's the main scenario, which is its own thing. And then we have guild um, PVE modes like the world boss, which you fight twice per day. And then this ancient inheritance that comes around uh, every so often. And this was a really cool guild PVE mode where you're exploring this giant dungeon you have a certain amount of stamina that you can move around these different like uh, hexagons per day and you can go and find treasure you can fight monsters you can defeat bosses this was actually my favorite mode that i've played in the game so far and it's a shame that it's not up all the time although i can see because it's a multiplayer thing where you're kind of working alongside your guild mates it might be a lot of stress to always have to be maintaining that and it might drive people away so having it as a treat once in a while is actually pretty cool as well so other than that the main thing in, in uh, Epic 7 I would say would be the PvP and we have several ways to do that. We've got our guild war where we actually try to take out another guild and you get multiple attacks per day. You have three units each. Then we have our arena and there's two ways this can run. We have arena versus AI. So these are people's teams but the computer is controlling them and then we have uh, Whoa, geez, I just lost it. We have World Arena, which is a live arena. I haven't actually tried it yet. I've just watched some people play it. But basically, when you play, uh, the other person is making their own decisions. And you have a mode at the start where you can actually ban their units and they can ban your units so that you can try to get a favorable matchup with your own team. Combat in Epic 7 is pretty engaging. And I actually forgot to film this segment yesterday so you can see change clothes. But right now I'm doing a Wervin hunt mission, which is one of the main things you will farm repeatedly in Epic 7 in order to get gear. And you can see how good the animation actually looks. I'll take it off auto so that you can kind of observe it without it going moving so quickly. But like even just the detail of the Wervin here or of these units, how crisp the lines look, how uh, like kind of HD everything looks, the portraits down in the bottom left there. Everybody has three skills that they can use. Sometimes one of the skills is a passive, so you don't actually use it you just have to fulfill the conditions for it to activate uh, and there's a kind of an active time thing on the left side over there where you can see everyone's little portrait sliding down a bar and that's how you know your turns come up so in the case of this game speed is just super important because if you are fast uh, then you will take turns more often than everybody else and if you're slow then you're going to be in a lot of trouble so generally people are always trying to get gear with a lot of agility on it or sorry speed on it and that's exactly what this Wervin is for it's entirely based around being able to get some gear uh, with speed so we're going to see here uh, an example that every single unit has an animated special that you can use uh, that looks really great here's uh secrets that we can see and there's way more cooler ones than these ones i'll be honest with you uh, but it is just such a good looking game and the combat is simple but engaging all right, and so I'm gonna show off a couple other animations that I think are really nice because I do wanna show off that side of the game. So we're gonna start off with Edward Elric and check this out. We got the 3D animation, we got the Alphonse coming in and the spear toss with the angry eyes from Ed, I love it. And then Landy here, we maybe get a chance to see her as we just gotta build up some fighting spirit, which is that red bar there. But then we have free spirit Tyria, who is a free unit that everybody gets. She's kind of like your PVE clearer for the early game. Look at that. That is 
That's a nice animation right there. Okay, so we're gonna go into the next battle. Hopefully get Landy online here. I had to go to another stage because I was just picking two easy fights. Here we go. This is my one of my favorites because I am a Big Mac fan. And there it is. Epic 7 also has a big campaign with lots of different areas to explore, lots of story to read and experience. There's some cool animations as well. I actually skipped the first season of story because I was just trying to grind all the way through to get to a certain point and get lots of currency for Full Metal Alchemist. I also skipped a big chunk of season two of the story and then halfway through I kind of started watching it a little bit and started to enjoy it a little bit. I've enjoyed about half of the side stories that I've played as well. Uh, some of them haven't been so good but other ones were actually quite good i'm actually enjoying the k-pop one right now uh believe it or not so this there's four seasons to go through right now and there's going to be a fifth season later on so there's a ton of content i do like this it's kind of similar to when i started playing ffbe that there's just so many years of content for you that for new players if you're patient there's a lot of a lot of enjoyment you can get out of this game i actually think that the story is overall good for for like a mobile game i would definitely recommend checking it out and and uh reading it and not skipping it unless you're you know joining for a certain club like i was and you're trying to get a certain amount of current currency or follow a guide to be able to gain some you know important equipment Okay, so there is one big thing that you have to talk about if you're going to talk about Epic 7. And if you did not talk about this, then you would not be doing the person trying to join the game a service because this is the the biggest hiccup with the game and it's the equipment system and how you actually craft some equipment. So for example, I have all this gear in front of you. You can look at this little symbol with the two lines here. That's a speed set gear. That's the most important set in the game. And you can see that this piece right here, I would actually totally dismantle this piece or sell it or whatever else uh, because you can see the speed there is only two. So what do we have here? We've got some substats, speed, effect resist, attack, and critical hit chance. And those things can come as flat stats or percents depending on the stat. Essentially, if you wanna make a nice piece of gear, you have to hope you get the four, three to four substats that you're hoping for. You wanna hope that they come in at the highest value that they can get. So for example, for speed, I'm actually looking for something that has four speed. And then once you actually find the base version of a piece of gear that you'd really like, and that could take however long, then you have to start leveling it up. And every three levels, it gains some extra uh, substats. So for example, I leveled this Abyss Drake Bone Sword, and you can see that of the five times that the substats were improved, speed was never improved. I missed all five times. Some of it went into, actually most of it went into attack, some of it went into effectiveness, and none of it went into speed. So that's the second hiccup. And then the third hiccup is the amounts that these substats can increase by can actually change, you know, it can be high or low. So you need the correct substats. You need them to be at the, the height of their ranges. And then when you roll, it needs to go into the correct substats at the highest of those ranges for rolling. That's a lot of RNG. And then we haven't even talked yet about accessories because accessories also have a main stat that is totally random and could be something that you want and could be something else. So there's certain ways to, to mitigate that. There's all sorts of things. You can go pretty deep into crafting in Epic 7, but it is a big, big RNG crapshoot and you have to know that going in. Now, I don't actually think it's that bad after all is said and done because as you can see, I have ton, a ton of gear. Now, some of you probably looked at the gear that I showed and you're an experienced Epic 7 player and you're saying, Missidia, the gear you just showed me sucks. Well, you're not wrong, but I'm starting out and my goal isn't to build the perfect piece right now. My goal is to put on good gear that can get me through content. I can slowly start pushing a bit more in guild battle in the arena, uh, you know, in PVE modes. And once I start, I, like, that's what you want to do, right? You get a bunch of characters and you want to actually equip them. If you spend a lot of time waiting for the perfect role, it's never going to happen. Now, as the game goes on, I'm going to become more and more and more selective with what I'm actually keeping. And for example, for, you know, something like this, uh, let's say the first thing it rolled into was effectiveness a couple of times. I'm probably, that's it. The, um, this isn't going to go to plus 15. Now, this is one of the first ones I built. So I was just like, hey, I, I just want some speed gear, but I would be a lot more selective with this, for example. 
the game also gives you a ton of gear. So for example, during that uh, in Ancient Inheritance, I got a bunch of this Lifesteal set. Uh, it started with five speed on each of them. So it's a really powerful set they give you. All those other PVE modes I told you about also give you a bunch of gear as well. And there's other ways, like for example, basically the new player experience in this game is pretty insane. They give you a lot of full sets of gear to use on a bunch of different units and you can get a bunch more from all the game modes and there's even things like the current event allowed you to buy like gear selectors that would give you random gear like there's there's just a ton of things that you can do uh, to get gear in the early game and kind of just progress your account. So just to kind of wrap it up, I do want to mention that there is a lot of good quality of life in this game and there's a lot of great uh, new player things in this game. So for example, we've got this uh, Adventurer's Path, which gives you so many insane rewards and I'm still completing mine right now. They've, I still have rewards uh, to gather. There's also in this events button, you can go down and I can't actually open these on uh, my emulator, uh, but they have this hunt expert challenge and there's three different versions. All three of them give you max rarity characters, all the stuff to like awaken them, equip them, all that kind of stuff to get you started in all the different hunts. So that's a really good way to get stuff. Uh, and then otherwise there's just tons of other, you know, things they've been doing recently. They had a uh, five star select ticket so you could grab the you know whatever uh, you know game changing five star a new player would need and right now they have a headhunting event which will give you a five star uh, dark or light unit which is also a very very powerful thing to give to a new player so tons of good things to get in on during the current collab and the you know with all the new player stuff that's going on so i do recommend that people check out this game if for some reason they haven't done it yet this is the time to do it all right, so that's gonna be it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have anything to add as an experienced Epic 7 player, please feel free to do so. And if you have any questions as a new Epic 7 player, then you know you can ask me in the comments and I'd love to chat about it. I also have an Epic 7 channel on my Discord, which I chat with a few other players, and I will also link some of the most helpful guides that I watched when I started out in case you are looking to get started. All right, we'll see you all later.